The Tao Self-Confidence, Episode 405. Welcome to the Tao Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a historic Filipino town-based writer. She's also the host of the Filipino American Life podcast, and she's also an independent curator, and I'm just really excited to have her on today to share her story. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Elaine Dolalas. Elaine, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, yes, thank you for having me. I'm a part of a podcast called This Filipino American Life. There are two other co-hosts, uh, Ryan Carpio and Joe Bernardo, and then my husband, Mike, is our producer, and so he's pretty much also on the show. And the four of us round that out, and we do our show twice a month. And I do other things in Los Angeles, and I'm always, I have my, I have lots of hats, that's what I can say. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Elaine, what's your cultural background? I'm Filipino American. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self confidence quote? So, this is a quote that I actually use for my personal statement for graduate school. And I totally thought I wouldn't get in based on it, but I did. So, I love that it, it, it stuck with me. And it's uh, find out who you are and do it on purpose. And that's from Dolly Parton. Awesome. And that's a great quote. And I'm always a big fan of Dolly Parton. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? This was like a hard question because I feel like self-confidence, it's always going to be changing. And like I, when you contacted me, it was I was really struggling with it because I didn't know if I actually had self-confidence, to be honest. Like it's, I was in like, um, I've been going up and down with my own like journey with it. And I think that's the thing about it. Like self-confidence is always going to be like a journey that you learn from. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, we all we all have confidence, right? I mean, you know, just going out there and do your, doing your own thing, you know, that's confidence on its own, I think, just because, you know, not a lot of people get to do what they want or what they love. And especially growing up Asian, right? It's like you're just told to go to school, get a job, get married, and that's it. <laughs> you know, you work till you're retired. Um, So, you know, to me, I think you do have that confidence because you're out there doing what you love versus like following a path that you're told to do. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and it was definitely like a long journey to get there. I think I was for a while, I was just just towing the line and I was very unhappy and I was just like in like a down like uh, I wasn't happy with where I was at with my life and it was like manifesting itself like physically and just emotionally and I had like a come to Jesus moment where I was just like what am I doing like I need to get back to like where I am most happy it's always doing something creative and what in the moments where I'm not doing anything creative that's where I find myself being at a loss and just being so sullen Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Elaine, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? So it's really interesting. I When I was a kid, I think I had tons of self-confidence. I just had no cares in the world. There's a bunch of times where my parents tell me these stories where I was a free spirit. Like there was a story they tell me where we were having a barbecue in Redondo Beach Pier. And it's like, you're seated like Beach Pier, Beach Town type thing. And I just walked off. I was like three years old. And I walk off away from my parents and my cousins and my aunts and uncles. And my whole family freaks out. They, they have no idea where I am. And I apparently like saw something shiny or something. And I walked away from everyone, like walked away from the party, from the barbecue. And my parents found me in the middle of like the boardwalk. And I was like completely fine, totally chill. Like, oh, this is interesting. And was no, no worries. And my parents were like, I'm sure they yelled at me. I'm sure I got scolded. But I didn't know to be scared. And that was that's an element where I want to always try and find that little girl that toddler who wasn't scared of the world because for so long like growing up and like just the trials and tribulations of being a kid and like a, a teenager you get that beat out of you and you lose a bit of yourself you lose your self-confidence and so a lot of my journey is trying to find is to be that little kid to be that like unafraid one wandering child 
Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's what we all go through that, right? As kids, like we don't know any better. So it's like, we're just willing to do anything. And, you know, sometimes society, you know, starts to starts to like tell us, no, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Or, you know, your family tells you like, be careful. And and then it kind of stunts our, our fearless like attitude. But we, we get to bring build that back up, right? Once we realize it. And was there a moment in your life when you realize, you know, you are a lot stronger than you realize, you know, you were more confident? Um, what was that aha moment? For me, I would say it was like three or four years ago, I was just in a really negative space. Like I had a lot of I battle negative thoughts all the time. And I'm into astrology so Saturn's return is when you turn 28 years old and it's supposed to be a time in your life where you'll be like super challenged and it lasts until you're in your 30s like it's a two-year process and I had a few girlfriends who told me like their Saturn's return was really rough and it was like and then I will get through it and then I was like what are you talking about that's mumbo jumbo and then I turned 28 and I'm like oh my god life is awful (laughs) it's hard what am I doing with myself I'm lost and so I my aha moment was like my continuous check-ins with this community of women this community of Filipino American women that I look to as mentors and just as friends as homies to be like can you check me can you tell me what like if I'm going off the rails or if I'm just like if if I'm in a if I'm like siloing myself can you make sure I'm okay and I think that is what's helped me so much because I I am lucky to have that community of folks awesome well thanks for sharing that and it's such a makes such a big difference when you have a group of people who are there for you like you know who are with you side by side who will pick you up when you're at your lowest points of your life and just inspire you to keep going and you know because of that what's your life been like now life now is completely amazing ever since i like had it come to jesus with moment with myself where i was like i'm gonna ask myself like how do i get out of this funk this depression that i was in and it was to find passion projects Once I just made the conscious choice, I was like, I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose like the path that will make me feel more fulfilled. Projects came my way that I just couldn't say no to. Like a friend of mine tapped me to be an assistant producer for this VR, this virtual virtual reality film called Walking with Grace. And I had never done that work before, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be scared. I'm going to go ahead first and help with this project the way I can. And I am completely and like utterly proud of the work that that we were able to create together as a collaboration. And then the same thing with this Filipino American life, the podcast, Joe actually had brainstormed having the show and he had to talk to Ryan about it. And then he asked me like to come in just to talk and was like, you did I did two other podcasts earlier on my own solo. And he was like, so what's it like? What do you think? He was asking feedback, you know, like doing a podcast is, is you don't know what you're doing. It can be very intimidating. So I gave him my notes and and he was just like, you know what? Like, hey, do you want to be part of the show? Like we need like the woman's perspective on like what Filipino American experience is. I'm like, why not? Let's do it. Like, the third time is a charm. I'll have like a buddy and it's not going to just be me. And, and then since then, like I love recording with, with them. It's like, they're my friends and like, it's a, it gives us like a monthly check-in with each other. And you know, when you're an adult, your, your friend relationships can go to the wayside just because life is life. <laughs> and um, you can just like, just get stuck doing your own thing. And the, the podcast is a great way to keep my friendships going with these two guys. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And it's great that you were able to find something that you love and it just like came out naturally, right? It's like you weren't really looking for it. It just kind of came came to you um, because you've done the work, you know, that, you know, maybe the universe was ready for you to see like this is something that you you can be doing, right? And you never know what, what could happen. Um, just embracing the unknown, which is the greatest thing ever. So, you know, that was really great. And if our listeners wanted, were listening to your episode and they were in their own journey of self-confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to them? My one tip is to learn to live your truth. So when you figure out what your truth is, it guides you in a way that you don't have to question 
any of your choices. And I know like so many of us can be like uh, indecisive of what we want to do. Like it's I mean, it's struggle to try and even choose dinner <laughs> or lunch. But if you just know what you want in life, what will make you happy, then it, I think it'll it's very helpful. Um, I have been doing this thing. I do mind map every year. I've been doing it since maybe 2013, where I'll have butcher paper uh, or those large like poster sized post-it notes. I'm in a family of community organizers, so we always have those large post-it notes poster size. And I'll put the year, and then I'll put like all my goals for like it's it's not necessarily a vision board because it's me writing everything, but it's just like me like manifesting all the things I want for that year like if I want to travel if I want to write more if I want to see my family and friends more it's all there and like for 2017 it says I'm looking at it right now and it's like read 52 books ask for help stop negative thoughts and the the main theme because like each year there's a theme and it's um get shit done (laughs) and it's like I need to I need the reminders and it's always in a place where we can see it me and my husband so that we know like these are our goals and what we're what our goals are and how we are doing and uh, and whatnot. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that and great tip that you mentioned. And Elaine, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out your podcast, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes. So we're at thisfilipinoamericanlife.com. Uh, on Facebook, you can check us out at This Filipino American Life and at on Twitter, we're at Val, T-F-A-L, podcast. Uh, I pretty much run the social media, so when you see it, most of those posts are from me. Um, the guys somewhat step in um, occasionally, but it really falls under me, so you get a, like idea of who I am through those posts. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Elaine, you can also head on over to the com and search for Elaine's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Elaine for taking the time today to share her story and tips on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was totally fun. Not a problem. It was great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.